Hello everyone, it's Brother Randy with Sour Milk Ministries. Welcome to video 17. Truth turned upside down, untwisting Galatians 3.10. Yes, unfortunately, Galatians 3.10 is one of far too many passages where the message the author intended to convey is lost in the translation. This happens for various reasons, ranging from the completely innocent to the much more sinister, although I believe that the primary reason behind a bad translation is simply the inherent bias of the translator. This is why any serious Bible study will incorporate the use of multiple translations, including literal translations. Because at least with a literal translation, you're starting out with the premise of translating word for word. You're not getting a subjective opinion as to what something means, they're simply translating what it says. In fact, you're going to see just how valuable a word-for-word -word literal translation can be in this video because often it's the only time you get a clue that there's something amiss with the translation. So, without further ado, how is Galatians 3.10 twisted by the translators? Well, let's go find out. Galatians chapter 3. Verses 10 through 14, New King James Version. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who does not continue in all things which are written in the book of the law, to do them. But that no one is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident. For the just shall live by faith. Yet the law is not of faith, but the man who does them shall live by them. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now with that, let's read verse 10 again. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who does not continue in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. If we take this verse at face value, we're left with the impression that Paul is telling us that if we have anything to do with the works of the law, we're under a curse. This is why whenever you try to talk to somebody about the Sabbath or about the dietary laws or about any other law that they don't particularly care for, they're quick to tell you that the law was a curse. And this is one of the verses that they'll point to to prove it. However, that is not at all what Paul is trying to convey to us here. In fact, it's literally just the opposite. Now, before we get to that, I want to show you another common way that this verse is mistranslated. Galatians 3.10, New International Version. For all who rely on the works of the law are under a curse. As it is written, cursed is everyone who does not continue to do everything written in the book of the law. This is a step up from the previous translation because what it's saying here is actually true. It's not what Paul said, but nonetheless, it's true. For all who rely on the works of the law are under a curse. If you think you're going to earn your salvation, your justification by the works of the law, you're going to be under a curse because we've all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That's what makes this particular mistranslation so insidious because, again, what it's saying is actually true. And it seems to flow with the theme of the chapter. But even so, it's bogus. It's not what Paul is saying. So, what is he saying? Well, as I said in the beginning of the video, you're going to see just how important a literal translation can be because it's going to give us a clue as to what's really going on here. So let's take a look at a literal translation. Galatians 3.10, literal translation of the Holy Bible. For as many as are out of the works of the law, these are under a curse. For it has been written, Cursed is everyone who does not continue in all the things having been written in the book of the law. To do them. This translation reads, For as many as are out of the works of the law are under a curse. Whereas the New King James said, For as many as are of the works of the law are under a curse. Those are two different things, they're opposite. 
So which is it? This is the proper translation. It's out of the works of the law. As you can see, this is a reference Bible, and it's giving us the scripture reference of Deuteronomy 27, 26, because that's where it's been written. So all we need to do is go to the source and find out what is it saying. Is it saying that anyone who is of the works of the law is under a curse? Or is it saying anyone who doesn't do the works of the law is under the curse? Now, let me clarify that. We're not talking about keeping the law perfectly. That's not what Galatians 3.10 is talking about. That's not what Deuteronomy 27.26 is talking about. Because I know that's what some of you are thinking. A lot of you are thinking. That's not the context here at all. So let's go over to Deuteronomy 27.26 and see what it has to say. Deuteronomy 27.26, Complete Jewish Bible. A curse on anyone who does not confirm the words of this Torah by putting them into practice. All the people are to say, Amen. So who's the curse on? Is it on the one who's practicing Torah or the one who isn't? It's on the one who isn't. Now, let's take a look at two other translations. Here's the Bible in basic English. Cursed is he who does not take this law to heart to do it. And let all the people say, so be it. Again, the curse is on the one who does not take the law to heart to do it. Not on the one who's doing it. Finally, let's take a look at the Holman Christian Standard Bible. Cursed is anyone who does not put the words of this law into practice. And all the people will say, Amen. So, as we can clearly see, the curse is on the one who's not practicing Torah, not on the one who's doing it. Practicing Torah does not mean keeping Torah perfectly. No one could keep the Torah perfectly, less one. And, of course, that was the Messiah. He walked out the Torah perfectly. And we are told that we are to walk as he walked. That means that every believer should be striving to keep the righteous instructions of God the best they possibly can, with the understanding that it's not for their justification, it's for their sanctification, is to become more like the Messiah who we should be emulating. Now that we have the proper interpretation of verse 10, how can we incorporate that into this passage and still have it make sense? What's going on here in the book of Galatians? Basically, Paul is rebuking Gentile believers because they are starting to fall away from the faith. They're starting to fall away from grace. And that's because some troublemakers started telling these Gentile believers, hey, you guys can't be saved without first getting circumcised and without keeping the law of Moses. You've got to keep the Torah. Then you can be saved. And unfortunately, some of them bought into that and they started keeping the law as a means of their justification. And that's what this book is all about. Galatians begins with Paul saying how men have come in and are distorting the gospel. And Paul defines that gospel right here in verse 8. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying, In you all the nations shall be blessed. In you all the Gentiles shall be blessed. So then, Mr. Gentile, it's those who are of faith who are blessed with believing Abraham. And that is indeed good news for you Gentiles. Because verse 10 tells us, For as many as are outside of the works of the law are under a curse. And you Gentiles were outside of the law. You didn't practice Torah. You were strangers from the covenants. 
You were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. You had no hope in the world. That's what Paul tells us in Ephesians. but now you've been brought near. You weren't brought near so you could practice Torah for your justification. Should you be practicing Torah? Yes, for your sanctification, but not for your justification. Verse 11, But the no one is justified by the law on the sight of God is evident, for the just shall live by faith. The righteous man shall be justified by his faith. Yet the law is not of faith but the man who does them shall live by them. Now, what does that mean? It's not saying that the man who practices Torah will be justified by it. If that were true, it would be a direct contradiction to what Paul just said in verse 11. This phrase is actually talking about being blessed in the physical land. If you read the book of Deuteronomy, this will become crystal clear. It's talking about being blessed with long life, and prosperity in the physical land. If you obey God, you will be blessed. If you disobey Him, then He will cut your days short in the land. That's what it's talking about. It's not implying that we're going to be justified by keeping Torah. No one can do that. We've all sinned and fallen short. All of us. Those under the law and those without the law. That's why Christ had to redeem us all from the curse of the law. And why did he do that for you Gentiles? So that the blessing of Abraham might come upon you, that you might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith, that you might be justified through faith, not by getting circumcised and keeping the Torah. Don't let these troublemakers cause you to fall from grace. You can't be justified by keeping the law. That's what Paul is saying here. He's certainly not saying that those who are practicing Torah are under a curse. We're told to let no man deceive us. He who practices righteousness, he who practices Torah is righteous just as he is righteous. But even so, we're not justified by that. We're justified by the blood of the Lamb. But that blood has become a stumbling stone. It was a stumbling stone for the Jews and even a stumbling stone for Christians. Now, what do I mean by that? Christians think, oh, Jesus came and did away with the law. I don't have to keep the law. I don't have to keep the Sabbath. I don't have to keep the dietary laws. I'm saved by faith. Yes, you are, but... That doesn't mean you you don't need to practice righteousness, but that's exactly what's happened in Christendom. They think the law was nailed to the cross. Paul never said that. Paul was pro-Torah. Paul never spoke against the Torah. Paul never spoke against the Torah in the book of Galatians. You talk about one misinterpreted book, this is it. And Lord willing, I hope to do a series on this. Nonetheless, verse 10 is not telling us that those who are practicing Torah are under a curse. No, it's literally just the opposite. 